Guten Tag. Welcome to NSFW Show. We are joined by Michael Barrett. You might have seen his video, What If Star Wars Episode 1 Was Good, on the internet. We go over all of the South by So Wasted, the NSFW meetup and go game in Austin last weekend. Boy, howdy. Isn't it just a handful of fun slapped across your mom's face? NSFW starts right now. Wink. Netcasts you love from people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is NSFW episode 118, recorded on 3-13-2012. What if NSFW episode 118 was good? This episode of NSFW Show is brought to you by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All streamed directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, go to netflix.com slash twit. Eddie Murphy, you only have 1,000 movies left in you before you die! Oh no! I better make them good ones then! <laughs> that's not racist. Who's saying that's racist in the chat room? That's a very believable Eddie Murphy I just heard. Alright guys, it is time! For NSFW, the new show full of win, the new sauce for the Weber Nets, the show that is nominally safe for work. I'm your host, Brian Brushwood, joined, as always, by part man, cybertronic, Borg dog machine, Mr. Justin Robert Young. What is going on, JRY? Holy crap. Brian Brushwood, we have a, we have a great hot off the heels of our, of our scintillating. South by So Wasted event in Austin, Texas this weekend. We're, we're firing right out. We're, just, we're, we're using the gravitational pull of that amazing planet. You're saying we're saying we're going to slingshot around the sun and go back in time and try to save some whales and be and make our show <laughs> yep. funnier than it is. Absolutely. And who is that whale, you ask? <laughs> well, it is none other than our guest <laughs> this week. A whale of talent he is. Yeah, Mike you know Barrette, you might remember him from the What If Episode 1 Was Good viral video. If you have not seen it, pause this right now and go watch it because it's way funnier than what's going to happen now. But now that you're back, let's introduce you to Michael himself. Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me both. Thank you so much. Yeah, man, this thing uh, got on my radar way early. And if you haven't seen it, basically, uh, Justin was brilliant when he pointed out, he said that he cannot think of a single other set of movies or any movie in particular that people want so bad retroactively to make good. Like normally if a movie sucks, you're like, wow, that movie blew. And that's the end of it. But here we are a decade, 12 years, 13 years after The Phantom Menace, and people are still trying to figure out ways to make it good after the fact. Uh, or, or figure out how it was bad. I think it's just, what, what I kind of came to the realization was, and partly with your video, is that we tend to think of the Star Wars prequels, or at least those that aren't completely Stockholm Syndrome, trying to pretend like they're not terrible, because they are. Uh, uh, no, you yeah. be nice to Adam-12. Stop that. Go ahead. I know. I know. Adam-12 is a very, very nice guy, but seriously, man, grow up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> here's the deal. Like, I think... We all just try to think of them as just these real – they were disappointing movies. They were bad films that we just don't really talk about anymore. However, it's almost like now now that we have the 3D re-release and we've had videos like yours and there's been so much discussion about it uh, – I love you, Adam Tom. Don't. <laughs> uh, we've had so much, so much discussion about it. It's almost as if you have not equal but a comparable amount of consternation, confusion, and hate for the prequels as you do love – for the original trilogy, which is, you know, it's just it's, this yeah, massive yeah. amount of influence. Yeah, you, yeah, it definitely uh, sets up like in in how much you dislike one thing, it just makes you love the other thing that much more because you're like, oh, they really are as great as I think they are because these ones, not not so much. Well, it's yeah, like, I, I like to think of it as like uh, you love the original so much that it just makes it all the more confusing when your spouse beats you. You're like, well, that. Just, <laughs> 
There's got to yeah, be a reason. You used that this to be makes... so nice to me before. What happened? Exactly. It's like there's got to be. I, this doesn't make sense otherwise. It used to just be... be me and you picking up power converters at the Taji station, <laughs> and now we just got a bunch of bantha poodoo on our. <laughs> That's the other. Oh, don't even get me started. So, um, <laughs> anyway, you want to know what? We're going to get into all of that. Uh, also, uh, we are going to talk about everything that went on in Austin this weekend. If you were able to make it out in the bunch of chat realm, folks, uh, were. Thank you so much for making the effort. It was absolutely amazing. We had a great time, uh, and we will talk about all of it. In fact, what do you want to do first, Brian? We want to talk about Austin first, or we flip, want to flip uh... a coin, man? I mean, whichever, however. You, in fact, we'll let Michael. Michael, you're now running the show. Which do you want to? You're in a you're in a dark room. Do you, want to, do you want to, yeah. to hear about uh, our Shut Up uh, or South by So Wasted party? Or well, you, you, want, you want to know what? I'm sorry. No, you, I'm, I'm co-opting this decision from Michael. Stealing Michael, it back. You, Stealing you, it waited, back. you waited a half second too long. <laughs> we're, we're gonna, you waited too long to talk about uh, We're, we're going to talk about this awesome thing first. Let's get through this, and then we'll focus the rest of the episode on Michael and his awesome stuff. All right. I got a giant collection of – for everyone who missed it, we talked about it last time, but, but we've since had our amazing event. You want to walk people through what we what, what happened? All right, so uh, Michael, here, here's what happened. Uh, Brian lives in Austin. Have you ever been to um, South by Southwest? Or I have these? not, and I was so tempted to go this year because actually, uh, Dude. one of my friends is in. Uh, did you get to see Fat Kids Rule the World? No, but I'm just no. picturing like, like the you... Matthew Lillard film, and he's he's one of the guys in it. So I was like, ah, I want to come, but work kind of. Dude, but you realize, like, you got, you got a, you can walk in with a big old fat five hundred thousand downloads nameplate and be fuck. Uh, oh, that was a close one. That was a no. Oh, no, you got a hard, you got a hard C out of that one. No, I said, I said, uh, I only got the bell, not the belt. No, you got the belt. <laughs> Suck it up, and bell. Like it. <laughs> Uh, no, but uh, yeah, no, uh, South by Southwest was amazing. We had a special event. This is the first time we did our own event, and we, we coupled up with Brett Rounceville, who runs the Go Game. If you've never done the Go Game, it's like the amazing race. We divided into four teams, and we had a series of missions that we had to accomplish, and then we finished with this giant power hour concert with Alex Spagnola, if you saw last week's episode, which, by the way, Justin, have you gone back and taken a look at last week's episode? Uh, no. No, I, I did not take a look at last week's episode. You don't need to watch told... the whole thing. All you need to do is just, just hit play and listen to us at the beginning and then just, just kick it forward a few notches and then tune in and listen. Here, in fact, that's I, I, I don't ever want to do this, but I'm totally going to do this. Michael, you ever played a power hour before? Uh, I got to watch you play that power hour. <laughs> <laughs> that was <laughs> so fun, so enjoyable. <laughs> All right. Here's Part all of me was to hoping that there'd be some gimmick that we could incorporate, but I'm like, I don't want to get that plastered. So, uh, no, that's uh, probably a good idea. So, so you start off here. here hey, right, uh, so uh, uh, a beloved children's time where uh, Brett yells at <laughs> no, random strangers. No, here's a true fact, Allie. I get 99% of my sleep on airplanes. and if I'm Okay, so so far, coherent. Let's just, that let's, sounds like a bunch of people having a good conversation. They, they really are. They're sober and they're, they're good friends. Let me jump forward. Like Anakin and Obi Wan, they're they're good friends. To get into packs. I oh wait, have I been in line to get into packs? Yeah, uh, people line up for like three hours beforehand before packs to get. I've heard like, that. Heard early. this. Yeah, no, I okay, maybe a little bit confused, a little soft around the edges here. Yeah, you know what? Let, let's go ahead. Let's let's go. Hold kick on. kick let's it go all the way. In. All right, here we go. Now we're an hour in. Well, here we go. <laughs> Unless you're you like a separate it... folder called bonus track. It's See. See? Oh, it's, it, everybody it, panic. It was too well hidden. Sorry. <laughs> Wait for it. Uh, you guys need to cover <laughs> it while <laughs> negotiate with the computer. Okay, no problem. Uh, <laughs> Any semblance of professionalism is gone. It's like nothing but trying to just maintain Allie, by this thank point. thank you so much for coming on. You're uh, so pretty, Allie. <laughs> You're just... <laughs> no, I think that's actually what you say next. Oh, really? Uh, Absolutely. Yes. The nice reason why I had asked you earlier before Brian jumped all over my ass... God damn. Uh, well, I'm sorry. If I can about, interject... About the, other, the other uh, uh, power in you... That... <laughs> Look at this. I can't even focus. I'm just grinning <laughs> stupidly the whole time. This is the worst idea we've ever had. All right. So anyway, that's what happened. And we basically thinking that we couldn't leave well enough alone. 
we, when we started drinking, we thought, uh, hey, here's a great time to make promises in public. So we brought Ali Spagnola, uh, paid to change her flight, to, and we promised to find her a, a venue. And Justin was the true believer who was like, hey, bro, we'll be fine. We'll find something. And I'm like, no, the, the, the ship has exploded on the launch pad, man. Yeah. There's well, no this, way. This is what happens. Yeah. After, Michael, this, this is so, so we, after we end the show, right, uh, we're all sitting around uh, and we promised live on the internet that we're going to go to this place and we find out that it's 12 miles away from where we have told everybody that the scavenger hunt's going to be <laughs> which is really completely untenable right for yeah. uh for for us to hold any kind of coherent event uh so we just sort of realized we've thrown our hats over the wall and that we are going to have to put on this event and brian and brett are not having it <laughs> yeah we, well we, we, yes bless you i mean as as people who run events we're terrified and we think yes there's, there's and no... that's the thing that's really what happened is Brian and Brett actually put on physical events for a living. I don't. (laughs) I sit in my room and just yell at things and type things on the internet and then I like I'm like well anything's possible because <laughs> if you me, believe Brian is words and typing <laughs> words it's like, the internet and, all you do is wish it and it happens someone so will make it happen exactly but unfortunately that someone is you now yeah and, and and there was there was a there was an awesomely tense conversation after last week's episode where like <laughs> we're, we're there in the room and we're just like uh, I, I don't know if we, uh, it's 12 miles away I think we're I think we're in trouble and Brett and I are like seriously can we move to another state and change our names and then maybe nobody will remember these promises but justin was the one who totally believed it and uh and sure enough it happened in the middle By the of the way completely foolishly like yes this all worked out kids don't <laughs> like don't mistake the real lesson here the real lesson is that we got completely lucky and that my confidence was complete false bravado it didn't matter though you i mean you were right because we got not only do we get a venue we got a venue on 6th Street, less than, what, 30 yards from, from the Alamo Draft House? Uh, yeah, but f- less than 48 hours from the time of the event for no charge. So thank you to everybody at, at Peckerheads yes. uh, who, who absolutely made that Peckerheads. happen. So but let's let's real quick get, in, get into some of the highlights of the Go Game. And you want to know what, Michael, uh, there was there was a bit of a, a controversy with, with the judging. Uh, you know, I won't spoil. I mean, I guess we it's out there that my team... Uh, won and, and uh, you know we're very uh, honored to have the competition of everybody that was in the uh, you know the go game with us. However, uh, maybe maybe things weren't judged accordingly. So, Michael, we're going to go and uh, give you a a chance to to judge Brian's team, Tom Selleck's mustache, with a yeah, yeah. Uh, a second a second opinion. So let's let's right. show some of the pictures. All right, here. Let me see. I, I got everything right here. We got. Uh, oops, that's uh, that's my little pony. Um, here's Depeche Duran. How do you have three viral videos that we may or may not play in the middle of this, uh, this episode queued up and yet none of the pictures? Well, because I had only just now opened it and I was waiting for you to say which team you wanted to see first. So we had, we had Depeche Duran who, uh, and everybody took, uh, pictures as they went through the, the thing. There we go. There's Bonnie and the Invisible Wife. Oh yeah. We should also mention it was freaking cold and rainy. Uh, and so um, we one of the assignments. There we go. Depeche Durand, They found uh, the Flash, and you had to take a compromising photo with the Flash. Yeah. So basically, the way the way things worked is you have a, a cell phone, and uh, you get missions on the cell phone. And you have to go complete those. But there are little things that you can also. Uh, you can. Uh, oh wow, that was actually not fair to have Bonnie participate in that particular challenge, which well, we'll get to in a second. The yeah. art project. Go ahead. Uh, but there's also little things that you have where, uh, you know, you have these people that are running around like this. The Flash was running around, you know, to catch the Flash. And when as soon as you scream the Flash, he ran after you. It was not easy to catch this bad mother hunter. And you had to take a super compromising photo with him. And so the photo that they took was John Blue Cheese, John Tilton, uh, Brian's uh, assistant and BCT. producer of this show. Uh, you know, he, he was cornholing the Flash, which is... <laughs> A sure fire that's the, way that's the to, clinical uh, term, just FYI. Yeah, it's a surefire way to slow that guy down. Uh, now, <laughs> so, these, these, know, this, meanwhile, is the, the winners. Home. What was it? The, the 12 inch sausages? Was that the name of you guys? Sausage, sausage Fest, Fest 12. There you go. The Sausage Fest like... 12, who later won. And uh, I'm not sure what they're doing here. Okay, so that was our picture of our art project. Here's the deal. And what I was saying was unfair was because one of the projects or one of the missions was we had to create a piece of art. 
and then uh, bring it to a art dealer. And by the way, this is how awesome the Go Game is. They have actors who are planted here, like throughout Austin. And so that one was, uh, we have to, uh, yeah, to find to find a secret agent who was buying art, and you had to convince her that you, you had to make a piece of art and convince her that it was so good that it should be- belong in the Museum of Modern Art, right? And so you were judged based on both the merits of what you created and how well you convinced her of it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and so ours was a hood ornament, a paper airplane hood ornament on a on a car that we had removed or whatever, some such absolute nonsense. But we, we, we did OK. I think I think we did OK points. Right. Wednesday. And and then and you guys had the comp- your compromising photo with the flash was him sneaking out with given given the, the OK sign. Like he just finished some important duty inside. Some important creepy business in the women's bathroom. Yeah, Correct. and that was – we were very proud of the fact that we were doing something legitimately creepy and taking a picture of it. This was not staged. Uh, we we really were making him stand in a woman's restroom, which I found really hilarious. Well, and that's the thing, man. There's some awkward-ass moments. Like you have to go in and you have to uh, – I, I approached the wrong person – Asking if if he was an art dealer because it's like the only clue you got was like she's rather flamboyant. Now this is at South by Southwest, and their idea of flamboyant was she had a feather in her cap, and so <laughs> and it's you're so just looking around and you're like it could be anyone. Well, exactly, well, no, no, no. Brian. Brian, explain explain who you walked up to. Well, no, I walk up to there's a dude and a chick with bright red on fire hair, like like crazy like my hair, but bright. Flipping red, and I walk up, you know, all cocksure, and in the middle of, I interrupt them at an actual dinner. I'm like, "Excuse me, do you collect arts?" And then the dude, and here's the other thing is, I didn't know if it was a guy or a girl, and I thought maybe this is a really masculine girl, and that's why she's so flamboyant. And the guy says, "Uh, not really." And then, uh, and then I sling. I'm like. Have a good evening. And Which off I went. funny because the way that you initially told me that story was it was a very – it was a way more uh, like hipster, not really. Like, well, no one describes me as an art collector. Oh, no. That, 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 is, that is the way it was. That, that he, was. he was. It was just like, well, not really. It was uh, – yeah. Correct. That was, it was more like was. it was like you had you had discovered an inner truth to him that like like wow I guess I am now that I think I of it I am an art little, collector. Yeah. Well, thank you, sir. Okay, so uh, the the other team uh, we had the kneeling Sanduskies, who I think gets the best. Don't get it. <laughs> best the best name award. The kneeling Sanduskies. There they are, right here. Uh, and um, oh, I don't know how much we should talk. Should we should we explain the full context here, Justin? Because I'm about I'm about to show their flash picture and i actually think they had the best flash picture uh yeah i actually thought your flash picture was very good but but let's uh <laughs> let, let's go ahead and well uh, okay and, this this right here this oh anyway the the ts Cessalog- so that's their that's their team picture there yeah and there it is <laughs> so now the here's the context here michael is uh can we go back to the team picture yeah. <laughs> for those of you listening on audio where there are four people on this team <laughs> You're saying she wins the visual belt. <laughs> she does. She does. But here, let me let me explain it to everybody. Uh, wow. Yeah, but put it back to the four. The, the All right. Here we go. Team. Here we go. All right. So there's four people in this picture. There's uh, two guys, and then there's a a, a younger man, a, a TSS Aloic, and then the older woman next to him is in fact. His mother, who so, is so flipping cool. You realize in the after party, she spent the whole after party trying to convince her son to have a beer or or at least get take a shot or do something. And he did. I bought I bought young TSS Aloic a shot. I did, I, 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 you didn't call me over or nothing? It was a very it was a bonding moment. Oh, oh man. Well, I'm jealous. You were his first. Uh, so so uh, yeah, let's go back to that flash picture. Just so oh my see. god! Yeah, just, so now just, knowing that it's just his for mom. a second, and I like that this is the photo in between. Like like everything got chaotic. It's hard to remember. And then I remember and then this next part. Thing you know, <laughs> boom, boom, Mama TSS Aloic with a fat handful of invisible dog. <laughs> So uh, and then finally, Tom Selleck's mustache. That was our team. Um, uh, what a what a. <laughs> oh, by the way, Saucy Rossi in the chat room says he just can't see it because the flash is moving so fast. <laughs> <laughs> Or there's something like Wonder Woman invisible. Jet yeah, there we go. It's, there. That's his invisible jet, is what yeah. it is. <laughs> he had he had a prophylactic made of the same material. <laughs> yeah. So so it was um. Uh, oh my God. Uh, I just got a text from Brett Rounceville. 
that I'm gonna I'm gonna kick this over to you, Justin. But it says I can open up the floodgates and uh, and uh, open up access to all these picks to Chat Realm in chat right now. Worst idea ever? Question mark. <laughs> Well, the only question I would have is, is the privacy of everybody else who participated, maybe not thinking that they were putting themselves up for, you know, yeah. universal internet ridicule. Like, I don't care. Like, we're going to show some stuff that I'm genuinely embarrassed. Is going to be up <laughs> All right. So anyway, uh, this is this is our team. Uh, team but Tom I've signed Selleck's up mustache. for this. This is the life I've chosen. I don't know about everybody else. Uh, Tom Selleck's mustache. We discover the secret agent. Um, we had to take photos of us looking good the way we want to be seen on the what front What was pages. that set up for? That Bloomberg was doing interviews. And we just walk up. We're like, look, we need a photo of us looking like badasses. Can you just let us sit and pretend to do an interview? And he's like, just as long as you don't tell people you did an interview at Bloomberg. I'm like, why would I do that? Nobody watches your crappy station. <laughs> And then, exactly. uh, and then we sat, we took this, and then the next photo had to be except for the fact that that's what we've done right now. <laughs> <laughs> shh, shh. Be cool. I mean, they, they, I mean they if we were doing it, it for it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> So, uh, and then, <laughs> well, I didn't say that I got interviewed by them. We just jumped no, on their crap. No. So, um, but then uh, except for that one time that you got interviewed by Bloomberg, <laughs> uh, Agent McGee at Bloomberg. And then we had to take a photo that we would be embarrassed to have the front page of a magazine. And uh, that was this one right, right here <laughs> inside a, a porta potty. And then, which I like that like, there was a continuity uh, for the for the audio listeners. The the picture of Brian uh, that he was proud of was him looking very very articulate. I'm, I'm also uh, smoking a cigarette. Do you see that right there? Oh, look at that! Yeah, great. It's like, it's like a Mike Douglas very, show, very like classy as you wave it about. Exactly. See, that's what I thought. I thought, uh, I, thought I looked yes, like I yes, knew, yes. knew what I'm up puff. to, and then mm. exhale and expound more. <laughs> Absolutely, but then of course we see on the on the other end that you know money costs, baby. <laughs> Got it. There's a quid pro quo to everything, and now Asian man Bloomberg reporter is asking you for. He's also you got butter Wonder his noodle jet. in the porta potty. Wait, what was that, Michael? He's also got Wonder Woman's jet. He does. Right. He's got the same equipment as the Flash. Very little, very few people know about this. Uh, and then we got uh, our f- compromising photo, which I was rather proud of. The compromising photo of uh, we called it "Where Spla- uh, the Flash Gets His Speed From." Um, <laughs> and we we definitely got uh, the flash doing rails of of well salt on on a trash can. Lid. That's why that wants the street name for it in Austin. Salt. <laughs> now why are they shouting racist? Why well, on earth? Well, because be racist? everything's racist on this show. <laughs> so anyway, um, and oh, probably the flash was a pull. This is a, this is our art that may have been the art that we put together. Uh, we called it the unbearable. Uh, what was it? The unbearable agony of the glass ceiling, and it's definitely a pull of sausage that we bought off the street and wrapped in a Magnum condom. <laughs> and then we put it in a paper bag, and we and we convinced the lady that it was uh, <laughs> that it was art. And this is her. She's uh, she's. Uh, Do you have a picture of the of the art collectors? <laughs> yeah, right, right here. This is the. No, art. no, no, no. Oh no! The, oh, oh, I should have taken your, a picture of the self discovered art collectors. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then uh, and then uh, we had to, that, that's Frogger, and uh, there we all are. There's me holding up the condom sausage. That's a great photo right there of the three of us. Actually, no. That's a great photo of the three of us. That so is, that is amazing. You anyway. guys had such a good time. Like my my crew was, we were tight. Man. You guys were like, business. That's why you won. In. That. What was that? I said that's why you guys won. You guys were tight. You guys were on point. All yeah. Right. No, well, we were only a four person team. Uh, and yeah, no, it was it was pretty uh, it was pretty amazing. All right, can, uh, we, can we wrap this? now? Do we want to get into the the real the embarrassing part? Yeah. Like, there is there is a coup de gras uh, here, and and there were a lot of video challenges. Yeah, there was video challenges like we had. Oops, there we go. Well, let me kill this. Uh, there were video challenges like you had to make a finger movie. So we did on Tom Selleck's mustache. We did a zombie apocalypse movie where your fingers had to be. This is a chick. She's getting eaten. And then this was. In an effort to like, I don't know, I don't know what you're thinking. We're trying to make it exactly like The Walking Dead, so that's supposed to be like the scene when they're when they're <laughs> pulling away and all the zombies are. That one looks doors. great. It looks amazing. Yeah. So anyway, uh, but uh, <laughs> you you guys had. Um, all right. Well, here was the job. Before we play it, let me set it up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let me so see. here's the deal. We have a challenge uh, mm-hmm. for Sausage Fest 12, and uh, 
It's reenact a historical event uh, with using only silent dance. No <laughs> audio. It's only through the magic of dance that you can reenact it. Interpretive dance, right? Now, yeah, I mean, I guess we are interpreting things. We're not uh, portraying them literally as they happened, but rather through the uh, usage of artistic license. Okay, well, I've, I've got one that's a little bit dressed up, but I honestly don't. I hope Patrick Delahanty is watching in the chat room. P. Delahanty, if you can, send me a text message and tell me in which folder you put it, because uh, I don't know if it's at the end of the South by So Wasted file that you put together or if it's in one of these other folders, because like we always do with NSFW, we wait until the very last minute to get anything set. Um, <clears throat> but uh, to give you an idea of what it's like, for example, this is what Depeche Duran decided they were going to portray the failing of the Maginot line, uh, which, of course, is when uh, when when what when the French fell to the Germans. Is that what the Maginot line is? Uh, yeah, sure. Why this not? is this is their Let's interpretive dance of the Maginot line. <laughs> You so can there see. they go. They got a big, uh, big Supremes hand gestures there. And then meanwhile, in, in kind of a, a mixture of Goose Step and West Side Story, uh, they, they, they get through the line. There. They go walking right through. Uh, I don't know, Justin, if I should just. Yeah, I'm going to right I'm gonna jump this forward and I'm going to hope that we've got the actual edited version. Oh, I, I should have looked at all this crap. Son of a bitch. Um. Do we not have – I'll be really excited if we don't have my video. I've got the original, but I want the dressed-up version. I want the, And you got to pick which historical event you did? In my video, it's right after uh, – yes, yes. Very much, unfortunately. Wait, I mean, you mean edited as in with, uh, with music? Well, yeah. No, they uh, – <laughs> well, no, 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 but they play that live. Uh, no, 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 no. This is the version I've got. It's a, it's a special from your friend of mine, uh, one Patrick Delay, or I'm sorry, one Zach awesome. Holder. Here we go. Okay. Well, hell, this is in the edited version, so we're just going to see it straight right here. Um, Justin elected to to <laughs> rock. Let's, well, all right. Let's, let's see. Let's see if you of, can there's guess. a lot of people. Uh, Steven Spielberg, for example, has uh, <laughs> elected <laughs> that we shouldn't forget the vile, horrible actions of the Holocaust. <laughs> oh, wait, the popular art. Right, and you most certainly should not forget that Justin Robert Young. Um, <laughs> Justin, Listen, I'm just trying to make sure that we never forget. All right, well, uh, and who can forget after this <laughs> rousing interpretive dance? <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Was she just the ste the? The gas? Yes. <laughs> and she definitely just... <laughs> the chat room says, I can't unsee this. <laughs> they say powerful stuff. <laughs> Again, you know, if we don't remind uh, each other uh, that it happened, then we will forget and, oh. and not remember it. So uh, there we go. Um. Let's, let's never show Holocaust. <laughs> <laughs> Um, people are saying that the rain was a nice touch, which I'm glad you had the budget to make the rain happen on there as well. Anyway, point is, we had a fantastic time. I got a little bit of footage here from the actual concert as well. We'll look at that, and then we'll jump into the to the rest of the show right here. The glue that brought this team together. Jason, yeah. drop some science on him. Yeah. No! Oh, no! Yeah. Guy. Let's no, love you the music! <laughs> That's a lot of cursing. <laughs> that was us accepting the trophy. And, uh... Dang it, man. What is up with this? Okay, so, so... Word, yeah, it's 60 songs. They're all about drinking and one minute long. One minute long. Take a shot in every song. And now you've got it started. Club chat realm event. Yeah. Dude, it was it was just it was just epic. That's all we're trying to say. It was it was an amazing yeah, no, it time. It was super fun. Uh, thank you again to everybody that came out. Thank you to Ali Spagnola. Uh, thank you to Peckerheads, man. Peckerheads bailed us out in a major major way. Thank you to everybody that tweeted about it. Uh, I know Brian had uh, one of the South by Southwest party people yeah, uh, tweet about it. Yeah, no, I'll I'll post out. Uh, we'll post this entire edited video that. Um, 
uh, Patrick put together. He was he was nice enough to he took hours of footage and edited it down to a really nice 15 minute package. That way, everyone at home could get the full experience like they were there. So there we go. Now, Brian, in a second, we're going to talk to Michael about what he's really here for, which is uh, his amazing viral hardcore video gay sex. Tennis. All right, come on. What you didn't Listen, tell now him? That we've already this is a surprise. <laughs> done the most anti-Semitic thing that we've ever done on this show. We, we, uh, who's this we, Tonto? You got a mouse in your pocket? What's, what's <laughs> the... <laughs> yeah, it doesn't come over his way. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm going to put up a firewall accomplice. between us right now. I, actually, I don't want to no, catch it. I did it. have somebody who's in your room right now who's probably wearing the medal that was earned on the back of that bill. <laughs> Uh, that's well, touche. There is that. Go ahead. He raved the turntable slave as well as uh, Jason, the quiet, the, the silent partner of our group and my uh, platonic friend, Ashley Paramore. But we are really here because, folks, we're real estate. We are real estate to tell you about Netflix. Never heard of it. Brian, it seems like you always say that. We've been doing this show for close to two years now, and no matter when I mention Netflix, you say that you've never heard of it, but I find that very, very laughable. It, uh, I have a condition. It's uh, net Netflix of Forgeticus. Netflix Forgeticus. Well, yes. That doesn't sound like a real uh, – have you, have you treated it? Um, I went to Netflix once, but I don't really remember anything about it. it remind, maybe if you were tell me about the service, maybe I'll remember what it was like. Okay. You watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. Stream directly to you. I don't. I mean, what does this? What does that save me? Well, I mean, you can get a free 30-day trial by going to Netflix.com/slash/twitch. Yeah, but it's like, the, but there are like three things that are really important to me, and I'd prefer not to waste them on a on a lesser service. You know, it's like I'm always having to. Takes a lot of time to go get a movie. It takes a lot of effort. It costs a lot of dollars. Listen, there's several easy ways to instantly access streaming movies and TV shows with Netflix. You can watch it uh, on an Xbox 360, PSP, Nintendo Wii, right there on your television, on the Roku box. It They're super so... inexpensive. Apple TV. Come on, man. It, it just sounds so difficult. It sounds like it would be a big, fat, tenacious amount of effort to make it happen. Well, you can cancel any time. That's, that's a good thing about Netflix. Yeah, but, but it's just, you know, getting those movies is such difficulty. You mean you can watch your movies and TV shows as many as you want, uh, anytime you want. Again, just Netflix.com slash Twit. Will it save me anything? Well, time, money, and has to hassle. <clears throat> All right. So if I, you're saying if I go to Netflix.com slash Twit, it'll save me time, money, and hassle. Yes. All right. Time, money, and hassle. <laughs> okay. okay. Netflix.com slash twit. Netflix.com. <clears throat> At least you guys aren't sponsored by like Quickster or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore, dude. I want to go. Boy, talk about the greatest rise to fame. And then that guy who had the Quickster Twitter, like that dude oh, yeah. thought he was sitting on a gold mine. He was and high then as a kite. They just axed it so fast, the whole thing. And you're like, oh, well. <laughs> yeah, we all should have seen that coming. It's like it's like finding out you won the lottery, but they pay out in Monopoly dollars. It, it was like yeah. it was well for that for that guy. But like Netflix in general is like your friend who went through like the skateboarder phase in high school, where like yeah. he never was really into skateboarding. Then he got into some of the music, and he knew some dudes that used to skate around. So he went out and bought all new shoes and all new clothes and all the. <laughs> and he was like, boards. everybody's gonna think I'm so cool, and everyone's like, what the hell are you? doing? Everyone's like, what? I don't I mean like, dude. You <laughs> we don't like leave you the house. The way you like you were. play video games. No, it and was... then like and then like he forgets about it like six months later, and then like three years like you're putting your coat up in his closet, and you see just a really dusty skateboard in the corner. <laughs> right now, there's Quickster banners that are just like all of a sudden collecting dust in the Netflix offices. I want so many. Do you think now that like when they were Quickster, there was no chance we could get this guy on the show? Now I like I'm upset. The whole internet has forgotten about him. He's like sad and drunk in the corner. Like, do you think NSFW? Why are you obsessed with the guy who had the Quickster Twitter? <laughs> I don't know. What a story, though. Like this guy. This guy had imaginary fame. He had imaginary dollars. He had imaginary ladies. No, he had I, everything. I, I, I agree with you. It's what, comma, a story? Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> journalism damn it all right <laughs> look uh let's all right let's have it out about this star wars thing because um of everything you said in the video by the way let me just 
sing to the high heavens your praises on how freaking awesome the video is. If you have not seen, what if, and the full title, if they're searching for it, is what? It, it is what if Star Wars Episode One was good. Okay. Uh, and, and then, like, belated media, just because, you know, got to promote myself a little. Dude, belated media. Hold on. Let me fix this. Hold on. Let me just do this. We'll throw this on there. I'm going to be subtle. Belated <laughs> media. There we go. So uh, <laughs> you you put this together, and, and so I'm covering up Justin's face. Um, so you put this out there, and you're expecting how many hits to get on it. And for those of you who haven't seen it, basically it is a very, very well thought out 10, 15-minute explanation of how with minor tweaks, the story and the, 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 the shooting and the character development could be changed very little in episode one, and you would have an amazing story, right? Yeah, I, I just uh... – when I when I was making it, I just really like didn't want to do a standard like review because the re-release in 3D had just happened, and uh, one of one of my friends actually uh, does video game reviews, and his whole thing is like I'm gonna always try to find the positive in it. So I started to make a review about like all the good things in Episode One, and that got me thinking like, oh, well if these things were done, we could have gotten here, and then. What happened happened of me just essentially rewriting the what? whole thing. And, and I suspect that that's part of the success of it because uh, there have been plenty of fantastic uh, re reviews eviscerating this thing, taking yeah. exactly explaining what was wrong with it. But I can't think of another one that with love and, and intention of, of saving it like, OK, just wrap your mind around this. Because when I saw it, the first thing I tweeted was I'm going to keep playing this until I believe it's how episode one, The Phantom Menace actually went. Yeah, and that's the, – the crazy thing is when I, like, uploaded it, I – first of all, at, at the point that, like, I did, I had, like, uh, just over a 1,000 subscribers. So I was like, oh, maybe, you know, some of these people will really like it and they'll share it with their friends because who doesn't like Star Wars? Uh, and then just the amount of positive response because, like, everybody's like, now you have to do episodes two and three. Like, I love your take on it. And it's – I I – was like aware that Star Wars is a big thing, but I wasn't aware like how many people would like get behind it, and I just was like overwhelmed by how well, supportive everybody was. Dude, a was. big enough Star Wars thing could get you a call from the president. Like I'm convinced, <laughs> there is literally there is no door that Star Wars can't knock on. It is it is that big of a thing. It is that entrenched in all of us uh, uh, culturally and, and specifically now with episode one it, it feels like there's been enough distance and like now there's been like a generation in between when we all saw uh, episode one and, and we're all in different kind of places in our lives that you can have an interesting way to look back at it and say well it's you know it is blank to me now where it was the same to all of us when it was about to come out, which is Star Wars is back. All of the oh, movies yeah. can die. Finally, more I remember, Star Wars. I remember the, the crazy amount of hype. Like my all my family was like, I was able to see this in theaters. So it's going to be so great that now you get a Star Wars experience in theaters. You know, like the the re-releases has happened in 97 or whatever. But this is like yeah. a new prequel, a new trilogy for you to enjoy. And we were, all went in. I mean, at that time, I was like. 10 or 11 so i didn't like realize how terribly it was going to like comparatively yeah. but then like upon getting older i'm like oh man i like almost enjoyed that when i was younger and now i'm just like oh well there's there there's a positive i wrote a glowing and by glowing i mean glowing review in my high school newspaper about phantom menace wait it right? was like what oh yeah that exists somewhere. I don't know where uh, where I would find so it. So dazzled but... at the time by like, there's double lightsaber and like there are two Jedi fighting one Sith. It's crazy. Oh but, yeah, like... uh, I just I bought. I mean, and and like it wasn't until like six months later that it, it was like it was like remembering a traumatic memory. Like a friend of mine was like, "Man, Episode One was really good," and I just looked at him and I'm like, "Are you kidding? That movie sucked." And then I was just like. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> man, I can't. I'm almost like I'm like we can't be friends in public anymore. Like that, yeah. And I'll tell you, I want. I'll give a bounty of a hundred Brian bucks to whoever can find this review out there somewhere in Cyberville. Oh well, I don't know if it's if I, we didn't have a website, it would have to be a physical published uh, copy of the Sword and Shield South Plantation's finest. How many, uh, how many were newspaper. at your school? How many were uh, at your school? What was that? How many were at, How many your, were school? at your school? Because 
then we're like narrowing down the chances. This right is good. There. This is good. Do, do you not have, have to be? It be that May June issue of '99 for the Sword and Shield. I mean, my, my I think I graduated with a I think a little over a thousand, like eleven hundred in my graduating class. But there, that's a lot of copies of this thing floating around. I, yeah. If somebody There's went somewhere. to South Plantation, you could probably find it. Or just w- talk to my mom. I'm sure my mom Dude, like, I will request. We, 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 we could do like a dramatic reading of it if we find this thing. That would be amazing. I, I, I will do. I will do a dramatic read. I have. I wonder <laughs> if this is. No, this is November, December 99. I do have a copy because I was going to bring it for Night Attack 2. Were this you is like another, this always is a terrible the movie review guy humor column I wrote. Yeah, were you always the movie review guy? That's what Michael just asked. I reviewed a bunch of, I mean, like, we didn't really have, like, a movie review guy. I think it was the editor of the paper at the time. But I did. I got a signed permission slip <laughs> to leave school, to skip school that day, signed by all my, my teachers, because I had convinced my journalism advisor that the only way, this thing sold out for weeks. <laughs> like, there's You're no, like, you this can't is get the in. Break. This is the and, thing. And all the kids need. want to read about the Star Wars movie, so we got to let this kid skip school so we can watch the Star Wars movie. And I watched I did. I intended to, and I did watch it. The first uh, first showing of Wednesday, so the 9 o'clock showing at the Movico Paradise Theater in uh, Hollywood, Florida, and then the immediate showing right after that. So like the 11.35, 11.45 showing. I got out of the theater and went right back into a line so I could watch that movie again. So it was a wow. solid six hours of episode one. Oh, my God. Um, and uh, I, I, I don't even want to have this conversation. Uh, okay, but here's the important thing. Michael, real quick. Yes. You have a bona fide viral hit on your hands. Now, if you're anything like the fine folks over at Red Letter Media, you know – that the you you have a formula and two more movies ahead of you. Yes. Are you prepared to announce live on the NSFW show that you're working on episode two? Oh, I can. Yeah, I can definitely confirm that. I actually have uh, episode three and the entire trilogy right like right out of frame. I'm telling you, this is uh, what you're doing is tapping into the same gestalt that we had from the Red Letter Media reviews, but from a totally different angle, and that's what I love about it. Yeah, it's. It's definitely interesting, especially going in, knowing like that people are paying attention. Uh, yeah. So I'm being incredibly thorough. The first one I was thorough, but this time I'm like rewatching the entire saga to just make sure I'm not missing anything, and just I just want to make sure I've tied all the loose ends up because even in rewatching, I was like, why are those things the way they are? Like the the saga doesn't actually sync up as nicely like two Lego bricks just fitting on top. Sure, sure. Now, now how how bad has I mean, have you gotten some of the some of the true believer jive, some of the the super prequel lovers that are like, oh yeah, like, they're uh, like, it's, here's that's an actually idea to make it a good. pretty funny one. There's there was one dude who kept posting on the on the comments and uh, just sort of trolling a little bit, being like. Your idea of Darth Maul running away, that, like, wouldn't happen. Like, Sith don't run away. And it's, like, a pretty long paragraph. And I just and I just replied, I'm like, didn't Count Dooku run away at the end of Episode 2? And, like, <laughs> and just the whole, like, community, everybody who watched the video, like, downvoted his and upvoted mine. I was like, I'm not trying to get this people, is, like, This is defend, Star Wars' but... version of uh, Showtime of the yeah. Apollo. Everyone's just like, oh, no, he didn't! Whoa! Yeah. I, I cloud, felt a little bad doing a slam on that, but I was off the Darth like... Maul guy. <laughs> so, it's uh, like, because there are always the negative comments, and you don't want to be the guy who's like, shut up, like, let me put you in your place. Right. But it was like, but it was like a fun little moment for well, me. Well, there is a problem, especially with something where passions run so high between yes. wanting to be engaged and wanting to demonstrate that you're not just some dude – you know, on a pedestal yelling and screaming your opinions, but rather uh, you want to engage with everybody. You want this to be a conversation and then just yeah. feeding the worst elements of humanity. <laughs> and by that, yeah. I mean people who enjoy the prequels. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you want, like, at the end of the day, like, I'd like to believe every movie I'm watching is a great movie. But the unfortunate truth is a lot of movies miss the mark at some point. But, like, obviously a movie, I mean... With Star Wars, maybe that's an exception because it's a huge franchise. But, like, when things get greenlit, 
in theory, like, out of the gate, like, people were like, oh, this is a really great story. And then somewhere down the line, it diverted and went to crapville. I'll tell you what's weird is, like, you see you see the line of, uh, you know, Star Wars has, like, official channels and unofficial channels, and fan stuff is allowed to do whatever they want. But if you, if you take a dime from Lucas, then they've got specific things that they get very, very tight on. Like, this is the kind of thing you would think, like, uh, it's... I don't know. That's the weirdest disconnect for me is the official Star Wars line that all of the episodes are great. And and I just don't know I don't know if they'll ever let go of it. For example, today on Frame Rate, we were talking about how, you know, Topher Grace re edited the yeah. all three prequels into one eighty five minute movie and it sounds awesome. The I op- want to see it. I want to see it so badly. Tom Merritt swore up and down that never in a million years would anybody see this because Lucas will not permit anything commercial to exist or to leak out that right. would admit that the pre- prequels are any- anything less than great. And meanwhile, like I'm but, but who's to say that's commercial? I mean, like, if it just gets out of there on the internet, Lucas well, has to- been Topher very Grace, of a fan Topher film. Grace got his hands on the assets because it was promised that it would be a private project just to be shown once. Oh, is that how wow. it happened? Yeah, that's as I understand so it. So if Topher Grace were to accidentally leave files out and somebody <laughs> were to take a thumb drive and upload them, I mean... I know that people like seek out the despecialized versions of Star Wars of the originals and stuff like that. I'm sure, dude. There's wh- a, where's WikiLeaks, man? We gotta deal with that <laughs> creep rapist at WikiLeaks getting all the government secrets out there. We can't have this dude get out what we really want. Somebody get Julian Assange on the phone. Presented. We got a movie that we want to watch. Three guys on the internet. They really like this movie. Please make it happen. <laughs> Julian, I'm calling you out. Tover Grace, that 70s show kid, <laughs> fake Venom, says that you can't get his movie. Do it, you creepy Euro trash weirdo. I, I mean, I mean that's, uh, that's the same thing that we're tapping into. We're talking about how, how everybody wants so bad to remake them to make them good. It freaking drives me nuts. Uh, so if you're going to bet, though, if you're going to bet, I'm going to say mm-hmm. sooner or later some version of this is going to come out. And it will be known that this is, if not the actual video Topher Grace uh, cut together, then at least uh, one based on his cut that's close right. enough. Like somebody, because there's much. like just it's written out like what happened. Somewhere there's scenes, a word so document doing it. with a bunch oh, of yeah. time codes and all we that. We will crap. see this before see, before July fourth. I'm gonna make a bet right now, and Michael, you're in on it. Brian, you're in on it. All right, all right. July by July fourth, uh, Independence of this year. Today we okay. declare our our Independence, independence Day. from Day. from Lucasfilm. We. We'll see Topher Grace's version. There's no way this stays under wraps. I'm taking the over yeah. on that. It's gonna. I be- mean, the fact that uh, the fact that Lucas has always tried to like hide the Christmas special, and that's still like rampant. Like, I mean, things like that get out. Yeah, but what the problem this, is there's... that's that's stuff that he did that he's embarrassed of. Right, like, right. Fan but film he, stuff... I mean, he thought he pulled it away from everything, and yet yeah. it's somehow still but, there. But I guess here's the difference: is at some point there were thousands of copies of that out there, and he that's thought true. he squashed all thousand. Of it. Right now, as far as we know, there is one copy. I tell you what, man, freaking Steven Spielberg should make a mo- movie about the stealing of this copy, and uh, I'd make it a documentary. I've mid- watched start. that. Actually have Harrison Ford pull off a heist <laughs> to steal this from Topher Grace. I mean, and- really, the only way that this doesn't get out is if Topher Grace is kind of in like Seth Green is in with with Lucas. And he right. wants to maintain a good relationship with Lucasfilm so he can continue to work on other projects. Well, and that's the but- thing. Obviously, you know, he's in enough that he was able to get original assets there. But, but see, I actually think they could put a spin on this and saying, you know, imagine that they say, hey, man, we live in a remix culture and everything. Right. We're remixing music. Look at this. Celebrity Topher Grace remix the prequels. What a what an awesome take on it. Look, if the guy who created uh, Garfield without Garfield can somehow sell that idea to John Davis, even though the whole purpose of it was to make fun of how crappy Garfield is, and now they're making money on it, then surely they could do something like that with well, the prequels. Well, but, right. yeah, but Brian, you know that George Lucas is a big stickler about keeping things exactly the way they were when they were originally released. That's he very like true. He is a true purist <laughs> when it comes down to it. Yeah. There was, a, there was an original voice that can't be tampered with. 
Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so uh, we're seeing it before January, before July fourth. That's a fact. Like oh, that, egg that you're just, uh, just on that, like re-release, everything gets kind of retooled every time. Note just in because I've just been rewatching the saga. Just a fun bit that because I'm like watching it with roommates and friends as I'm like going through. Uh, yeah. A bit we were just trying to figure out like what else could George do in like the next re-release of the thing. We figured out two things. Uh, the first will, would be subtitles for everything that R two D two says. Oh, geez. oh my God! That, and by the way, that's that's the most shocking thing for me. One of the things I loved on all three of the original movies, they had it was always these awesome interactions where one was talking an alien language in subtitles, and then the other one spoke English, just plain English, like, like as it was, if they knew. Yeah, yeah, like and like, like R2, oh no. I mean, everything is like it's all exposition dumps with R two of like, yeah, no, I'm going to uh, go see Master Yoda. Like he's just, and then it's like beep boop. You like understand what. <laughs> R2 yeah. say or but. or a great way to bury just just virulent obscenities and slurs yes. about C3PO's uh, R2D is secretly sexually. a racist is what you're saying. Yes. I mean like is that's where you read I mean I don't know obviously it's a Rorschach so you read in what you want to read in but yeah, I yeah. just read like like you know just a horrifying obscenity coming out of this little bot. Yeah, the, oh the other bit that we come up with is just like any person who's got a mask can now have a voice. And yes! we figured, like, the worst would be to give uh, Boba Fett, like, more lines, but it's, like, a terrible voice. We realized it was Chris the voice. Tucker. You, Chris you, Tucker. You played Star, Star Fox 64. It's, it's the, we figured out it was the voice of Pigma. So it's, like, uh, they walk in, and uh, Vader's there, and Han shoots, and he pulls the gun away, and he's like, won't you join us? And you just hear, yeah, join <laughs> us. <laughs> and it's just that terrible voice echoing lines. <laughs> We were laughing about it so hard, just like oh that, that's God. what he'd do. Okay, so so uh, we, we're definitely getting now. When you do the second episode, as you explain, like I, I love this, and you do realize this this could be a dynasty for you. Assuming the next one gets half a million, the next one after that, you got a money machine yeah. here. You can re envision crap and make it awesome. Uh, but with the trilogy, it's going to be tough. Are you going to expect everyone to watch them just one right after another? Or are you going to start the second one saying, now remember where we were in our yeah. fictitious episode yeah. one? I realize, Are you like, going to be pissed I when Toby assume... Grace edits all your videos into one? <laughs> I, I respect him to the highest degree because <laughs> it seems like from what everybody who was at that screening said, like he managed to make a more cohesive story where right now, like going from one to two and two to three, it feels very disjointed. But yeah. So 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 how are you going to handle the transition? Uh I'm going to assume that people have watched the first one with the little like annotation below of check the first one. Yeah, click here to go see it. Click here and watch that. Um cuz I realized like I could be going the route of like assuming that episode 1 isn't fixed and then I'm brought in for episode 2, but that then creates Branching but yeah, off. now you got like sideways yeah, universes and you're flashing forward yeah. and everyone's yeah, confused. I just I think people well, I just like to assume that people are gonna roll with me on the ride that I'm taking them on and then we'll we'll see how it ends. So, okay, can you can you I know you have to have already I I I would bet the five dollars in my pocket that if you're sitting at a desk in that desk drawer is some secret note, maybe on on some a cocktail napkin of other movies that are next on the chopping block. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm I'm hoping to make it uh very much about like what everybody else kind of wants, and the one that was put in a bunch was uh, Spider Man Three. Oh, dude. speaking of Topher. speaking of Topher Grace, yeah. yes. Uh, Give him a taste uh, of, of the loser. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Spider Man Three was is definitely a movie I feel I could work on. Um, well, that uh, one, I mean, that's that's a mess, though, because, like, really... The problem is, could, all, could you, the whole you video do... boils down to, here's a crazy idea, only have one villain, and then that's right. the end of the video. Well, that's like, well, I but mean, no, but that's, you that's can, not bad. You I mean, like, look at villains. all the Batman, all the... The, the the Dark Knight and uh, and all the Nolan Batman movies all have multiple villains. So it's like I, I used to be on, on that side. I used to be on the man, cut it down, just get one villain. Of making but, it uh, just making it so one is kind of secondary, and the fact that they've used like Green Goblin in like one, not really in two at all, but like three. The way it resolves of like 
them working together, like, that works. It's yeah. just get rid of – you don't need Sandman and Venom. Right. That's, well, and, that, that would be my question because you can do a Sandman – I feel like that's almost two videos. It is. Like it is. Spider-Man two, 3, two what if it was a Sandman out. story? Sp- uh, Spider-Man 3, what if it was a symbiote – Venom, or or, or, or or even just a, you could even like you could have in three. If, let's say you're setting up for for longer than three movies before you want to self destruct and reboot it. They could have so easily had it be Sandman is the main villain, but there are hints leading up to uh, like I w- I would have loved it if if uh, Spider Man three was hooray for his awesome new costume and. Oh, we defeated the Sandman, and that's it. And you sp- you yeah. end it with he's got a rad new costume with super alien powers, and then the next movie is when you find out that it's dark and evil and all that stuff. Like, yeah. they, like they did it in the comic books. There's a nutty idea. Right. Why don't you respect you also the source have material? To, they, they, I mean, they signed him on for three. And so now they're like, well, we got to get it all into one thing. And so they crammed. And Oh, you we, think that's what it was? Is they had Topher Grace signed and they only had him for one movie. So I, well, No, I think it was uh, – uh, I think it was the other. It was Tobey Maguire and, and that whole crew. And like, Kirsten they were Dunst. And, yeah. And so they they signed him for three, whether they had like Eddie Brock and you know that that could have been shuffled, but they they had their three people on there. So are you are you on board for the reboot of Spider Man this year or no? Yeah, I am. I'm I'm okay with it. I think it was a little faster than maybe it needed to happen, but uh, I'm excited for the new take. Uh, I like Mark Webb a lot, so I'm interested to see what he does with it. Well. Like, like for me personally, I am my knee jerk is I hate the idea. It's so soon and so unnecessary. Uh, but the last time I felt that was when they did that with Batman Begins, and I loved right. Batman Begins. So as long as long as they do it right, you have no reason to hold a grudge. Yes, exactly. So and I'm, I'm, I'm going to withhold for, judgment. I'm for a movie version of every franchise I've ever liked, done by different directors and different actors every year. You like, are uh, you just, are for the RIAA proclaiming no new songs. Everybody just sing different versions no, of these no, no, songs. No, no. I'm not saying that you. I'm not saying that it has to come at the expense of stuff. But like, if they're going to make a bunch of random stuff, I'd rather see another X Men movie or another, uh, yeah, a Daredevil. T- try Daredevil again. Who cares? Like. Just do stuff instead of I don't know Battleship Two. You know, like I mean, if we're going to be doing crappy franchises, yeah, I'd dude, can we can be we crappy franchises? I like. Can we oh, all go uh, in? Battleship. Yes. Is there anything more representative of the utterly disgusting practice of of just taking every third rate franchise and throwing it into a mega blockbuster, spending hundreds of millions of dollars that they have to spend hundreds of millions of more dollars in order to market it, in order to yeah. get this piece of crap to trick people into go seeing it with their 3D glasses or whatever. Like, can we just all cross our fingers and hope that Battleship is the end of this? Like, Battleship is well, the they, representation? Universal broke off its uh, contracts with Hasbro, Mattel, I believe. Like, yeah, or Hasbro, whichever one it was. Yeah. Wait, what so, does that mean? Yeah. So like they uh, they were in contract with them to do like Candyland and Battleship and, and all these other things and and this year they cut it off. This is good. well good. I can't believe that this was even a thing. This Ladies is the, and gentlemen, the host of Frame Rate, Brian Brushwood. No, I did, 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 did. I wouldn't have believed it. This is terrible. Of okay. course. Why do you think they're making these movies? Because they had the license for it. Oh because they, they, at some point, somebody sat in a room and said, hey, look at brand awareness. That's all that matters yeah. about this is brand awareness. They, do you remember these things? And do you remember these things fondly? And they said, what do people remember fondly? I remember sitting with my grandmother when we played <laughs> Candyland. Uh, and that's what and they've got and Transformers boom, and, and that like set the whole thing off well, Transformers then, being as huge as it was like yeah, made everybody there, but, believe like oh we can make blockbusters out of anything that's already known but like Transformers was a formula that worked right well well, or, or, you know it was also a beloved property like nobody yes. nobody plays Battleship in the backyard and nobody plays Battleship as if it's an alien invasion. And nobody plays Battleship because that game sucks balls. <laughs> Simple enough. Simply put. By the way, hold on. Why isn't that like the hugest thing on Earth as like an app? Like I would play Battleship with people via app. No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't play Battleship, period, at all for anyone. Nobody, nobody I, those, likes Battleship. Those apps, they're bringing all the games that like you – played when you were younger and you're like yeah i really do like scrabble and pictionary like you're playing those now so battleship oh, this, 
You love the game. You hated playing it with your stupid family. And and, and, and having things. to wait for them to do things. Now you're on the go and you've got your app. You do it one moment standing in line and then you keep going. It Dude, works. Yeah. I'll tell you, actually, you're you're 100% right because I, I noticed it first with Settlers of Catan, which is a board game I love. But when <laughs> it came out for the Xbox, I realized this is the first time I've ever experienced a board game that was better in virtual digital form because uh, the the turns move faster it handled all the calculations for you you didn't get in fist fights and arguments during it and uh now with the ios that was all before the ios stuff now with the ios stuff uh i, I i'm done with physical board games i only want to play virtual board games from now on see battleship baby bring it. <laughs> that doesn't I'm make sure battleship be, any i'm good. sure we're gonna have it by the time that movie comes out oh yeah that being said I don't think Battleship is going to be bad. <laughs> what? I, what? Mm. I mean, like, this is, this is the 21st century version. Is that they're not going to overcomplicate it with plot. This is Coupon the movie. Field, this battleships, is Battleships, kill the aliens, or get killed by the aliens. It's not going to be some crazy malarkey backstory about how somebody's mom died, and then meanwhile there's an esper that's talking to 14 people in the world, and Stanley Tucci shows up, and they have to get some sort of um, mystical amulet to rub on somebody's butt. Like, it's going to be simple. I don't know. I feel like that could still very well happen. I mean, we've got... Rihanna and Liam Neeson in there. Anything is possible at that I love, point. I love, how, I love how Rihanna, who's from uh, Trinidad, has a Caribbean accent that sounds fake. It's, <laughs> it's, it's amazing. And she's like, you listen to her, like she's literally from the region. But she's like, my father once told me. And you're like, that's fake. Stop talking like that. <laughs> you're like, and it's offensive to the real people from Trinidad. Exactly. Get the hell out of here. Make it look like cartoons. Uh, okay, so seriously, what other movies are you going to fix? Uh, yeah, we tangented a little. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's a little bit of Welcome to the NSFW. Yeah. Well, that's also <laughs> yeah. what I do in all my videos. Like, my whole thing is, like, see how far I can kind of go off on something and then bring it back. Uh, 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 Last Stand, X-Men Last Stand was also there. Yeah. Because you uh, realize that another, movie. Another, another one where. A lot of that plot was ripped off from Whedon's, uh, was it Astonishing X-Men run? Yeah, Somebody... just a lot of stuff got crammed all at once. Yeah, but I mean, there's a lot of cool elements in there that were oh, yeah. just completely sort of run over and not now, fleshed uh, out. X-Men 3 The Last Stand, is that the one that ends with, uh, I guess, uh, wait, was it in 2 that, uh, uh, not Phoenix, Jean Grey died? Or in 3? Yes, Yeah. in 2. In two, two ends with Scott Summers visiting the lake. Right. Oh, and, and you starting the to see shot Phoenix. Is the overhead of the Phoenix. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, burning in the middle of the lake. So, so according to that trilogy with the last stand, just like oh, BT Dubs, Professor X is dead. Well, no, I mean the 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 plot of the last stand is Dark Phoenix, but not in any kind yeah. of the cool ways that the Dark Phoenix was the Dark Phoenix in the comics. It's like convoluted, stupid Dark Phoenix, who then now all of a sudden there has to be this. Uh, working together of all mutants to try to stop her, but then there's also this division of whether or not you are going to uh, cure, whether you, you can cure mutation. Totally not about gays. Whether or not <laughs> yeah, there's that. Special... Isn't, isn't it that one that has the like? Have you mom, tried not these are, a mutant? These people are like me. That entire allegory scene that's just yeah. coming out to your parents yeah no it's yes. like have you tried not being a mutant was was an actual line in that yeah. one now that i think about it yeah and you're like it was very thinly veiled good job guys good job <laughs> very good subtle job. very yeah. subtle well but then again like x-men has always been even in the comics has been a very thin race right. issue. it's always it's always been about the people who are different and how whether they assimilate or are proud of who they are but, exactly. oh, yeah, they also have superpowers. <laughs> right. They're also superior in every measurable capability. Right. <laughs> like actual gay people. <laughs> right. Everyone knows they have a superior fashion capability. They have fashion powers and uh, dancing powers. That's yeah. really horribly offensive. Wait, uh, they're superior. That's more offensive than Holocaust and dance. <laughs> what are you talking about? They're, your, uh, your aspersions about gays. That's... I'm going to go. Hi, my name is Justin. <laughs> what the hell? You I are not. You are not going to. Brian Brushwood's hate speech. We don't want to get <laughs> limbo here, Brian. I, I'd like to just say Brian just positively was like, there are all these positive things they're doing. And then you danced in the rain about the Holocaust. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, we're clearly of the same cloth. The two of us. We're clearly equal offenders. <laughs> I we're apologize clearly... <laughs> for Brian. On behalf of Brian, I apologize. <laughs> 
I'm not going to say that either was particularly wonderful, <laughs> but, you know. God damn it. hate you, Justin Robert Young. Um, <laughs> all right. A so- beef in the chat room. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> What what else? Uh, uh, anything else on the chopping block? Anything that needs to be fixed? Because the problem is there are plenty of crappy movies that everyone knows are going to be crappy, right. right? What you need is a movie that everybody wanted so bad to be good, and it just wasn't. Yeah. Um, I just had it in my head, and now it's totally gone. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, of course, Indy 4 is there. Oh, my um, God, yeah. I, well, just, well, I, I know I need to – space myself away from it at least a few because red letters done those and i don't want people don't, dude, to just dude, be don't like, even sweat it just go just follow them no, step no, no, for no. step don't listen to brian you you, you need you, you i i think it's great that you understand that you're in the same universe a lot of the people who enjoyed right and red a lot letter of people are stuff. going oh you're a lot like red letter and i'm like well yes and no and the fact that like i'm trying to <laughs> actually be like, you're like they're like box. you're a lot like red letter you're like i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> 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 i know what the pizza roll and got these women <laughs> down I'm in my these, i'm sending <laughs> Everybody, yeah, you're like, like, oh, uh, email my web thing if you want bagel bites. <laughs> like, it's totally different. I got lemon drops candy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so you. But, but no, I mean, there's a shared audience, though. I mean, there, right. there are super it's, it's people who really care about film. Both. Yeah, no, yeah, uh, I, I don't know if you heard it, Justin. He said it's people who care about film, and I think that's right. So if you're going to put. Indy 4 on pause. That, that's a way nicer way of saying super analytical movie nerds. Because <laughs> 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 that's what I, I would think of me as. It's, it's like, oh, like hey, yeah. I, I want to see this all broken down in super minute detail and understand process and story. See, and now that I'm thinking about it, there's plenty of movies that we wanted to be good, but then again, like, for example, the chat room is suggesting The Last Airbender, but the problem with The Last Airbender is the solution's simple. Like, here's a crazy idea. Why don't you follow what the cartoon did? Because the cartoon right. was and, awesome. And you have to make it more movie movies because there's so much that happens in that like i mean there's the one episode or there i mean i have not watched enough of last air or like i know i know i know i know stop making that face don't let him make the yeah. crazy face all right but that's uh, it's fine i'm, I'm slowly catching up on my television i'm not as well versed in television like i just have you guys seen death note no no that, make that the was crazy like the face to one. brian now yeah now you make the crazy face your turn <laughs> You're like, see, Brushwood works two ways, sucker. People uh, are going crazy with I mean, Death Note in the chat room, by the way. Yeah, Death Death Note is amazing, and like for for someone like me, and like for for just the people who really like rule set up, and like you abide by those rules. Uh, it, the show is amazing because it manages to set up a bunch of rules, but then dance around them. Like it's masterfully done. But yeah, Airbender is something that I need to get into. Uh, it's just, I know whenever I sit down with a show, I have to give it like the entire season or the entire series. Yeah. You will and not regret it. You suck. will not regret it. It's all on Netflix and it, and I'm talking not just to, to you, but to all the people listening. If you're at home, I don't care if it was made on Nickelodeon. I don't care if it's for kids. It is. I've, I just finished no lie. My third lap of watching all the episodes with my eight year old. She watched it when she was five. She watched it when she was seven. She watched it when it was eight. Uh, it is the most richly detailed, awesome universe, and they're, they're bringing it back with a new series as well, which will be awesome. Yeah. If, if you don't watch it, guys, don't get it. What? It's great. It's great. It's great. I've heard it's great. <laughs> okay. I, I, I look forward to watching. it. it's great. All right, look. Uh, where can people see, if not this video, what is the one video of yours that other people should check out right now if they saw that first one? Uh, if they saw my first uh, of mine or just of any. Yeah, yeah. Or just, yours, yeah. What, what do you got to promote? We want to put a billion internet dollars in your pockets. What What is the most efficient way to do it? I mean, uh, just going on YouTube and searching belated media should be the first thing that pops up. I have a Facebook page and and a Twitter and a Tumblr that are all just if you type in belated media now, are, and are, Facebook. Are you, are, you, are you a film student? Because the whole reason this all came onto my uh, radar was from uh, Hector, right? Yeah, Hector and I, uh, Hector Cortez and I went to uh, school together at UCLA. Okay. Uh, he was a classmate of mine. 
Awesome. Uh, I've never seen his face. I only know him by the sad clown picture that he has as his avatar. Yes, he is very much uh, all about a sad all clown. About privacy. Yes, he <laughs> he's is, very he's much sound, that. sad clown of our class. Um, he's, he's, exactly. he's the class sad clown. Uh, yes. But it's amazing because, like, uh, I remember he was one of the original fans on Scam School, uh, and this is like over four years ago now. And I've never seen his face. I've followed him on Twitter, and it's amazing to me the type of friendships that you establish on the internet where you can care deeply about someone someone and trust their opinion and yet never even know what the hell they look like. Yeah, it's it's amazing because I definitely have started uh, just in like with this and a few other projects that I've done, like become friends with people but never really met them. Yeah. And, well, that's, and it's just like a very fun, positive thing, especially – when everybody is so supportive of one another and just like, oh, I understand your opinion and now I'm going to state my opinion and we're being civil about it and not just like tra la 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 Right, of course, <laughs> of course. Uh, well, and I, 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 for all I know, Brian could be a huge uh, uh, fat woman. Like, I don't true. know because we're only friends on the internet. Like, we, we, we don't see each other physically. No. We don't know. Never. You know. <laughs> This is all, it's all, it could be smoke and mirrors. I, I, yes. I just, I can't know for sure. It very much could. Uh, okay, well, look, so so check out uh, Belated Media, your subtle plug right there. Uh, belated Media, love all of your stuff. Uh, and uh, do you have a time frame when we might see future videos or no? Uh, I'm taking a while on episode two. I'm hoping to put out uh, a video of something else, an older uh, film that a lot of people seem to like. Just to but... break it up? Just to break it up and to give me a little more breathing room, just as like, here's something in between while I am feverishly working on this. Because it's like, episode one, actually, I filmed and edited over the course of like 19 days. Right. Like, Holy like, crap, it took 19 days just to, just to get everything exactly right? There was, there was just like, right, like, first it started of just me like rambling, like in front of a camera and then cutting that and then... Uh, going through and being like, I need to kind of link these ideas together. Did so you go back like, and you, you had to put on the same dirty shirt over and over and over again? Yes. Yeah. That was actually, that was the thing that was driving me crazy was I'm like, when I, when I was just, when I hit export, I just like looked down at myself and I was like, I just smell disgusting. Oh my God. <laughs> and yes. just like, and took a shower, like right, right as the export was happening. And, and, and then the okay. rest happened. But yeah, I tried, I just kept putting on the same shirt and was like, uh, but I do have to make this point about Darth Maul and like further explain that and like just awesome. all, all the fun stuff there. Otherwise, the internet won't know. You need yeah. to suffer. You suffer I mean, for your yeah. art. <laughs> yeah, it's that, and also like the lights that I have in here. Like you can, it's been driving your your key guy a little crazy. Are you not... are you watching? Like I don't know which feed you're watching. If you're watching what I'm sending back to you, it's only green screen. But if you but, but for everyone well, watching I... at home, Jammer B's been having a field day, throwing everything oh, he yeah. can. Oh yeah, I've got cars racing behind me, at least from what I'm seeing. But that's a little later than so. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to comment on it, but I'm not seeing it as we're talking right well, now. Well, that's that's smart moment. because I actually don't know what's going to show up. I in have the no final idea what's going on because I'm just watching the Skype conversation. So I'm sure everybody's going to have a hilarious time when they subscribe on iTunes, the NSFW show. Yes, yes. Um, as they all should. And, so and uh, indeed, indeed. All right. Uh, so you, youtubecom slash media is where people yes. can find stuff. Subscribe, put, it up right now. Let me ask you a random question, just because I, I've heard there's a lot of it. Like right now, for those of you who don't know me, I know a, a fair amount of people that do YouTube stuff like semi-professionally or, or have popular channels. It seems like there's kind of like a talent rush because all these channels are kind of happening. It's a big, big recruitment thing. Have you heard any buzz on that? Have you been approached for anything like that? Uh, Machinima contacted me about that. Uh, I, I, but they were like, hey, we really like what you're doing. Could you do like a video game type thing? And I was like, well, I, I play video games, but I don't so much i couldn't be as thorough as i am with with games as i am as movies um yeah but yeah they're they're uh google and youtube gave a ton of money to uh a bunch of the people so now they've got like spin-off sub channels going on yeah uh, it, just, it, it seems it it, it, just, it it's so crazy because it just seems like there's this weird uh like all of a sudden it's a real it's solid like grunge, push it's like grunge quality. got big Right. So now all of a sudden, all the major labels are snapping up all the indies that kind of existed. And they're like, wow, yeah. what are you? You got uh, Nirvana? Well, we'll take Pearl Jam. And uh, also, uh, we want Alice in Chains. And uh, so it's like a lot, all these people are all of a sudden like, man, I'm getting calls from like 
people that are fairly big internet people that are just looking to grab any and all talent they can. And I'm sure you've got right. contact because that video was huge. Yeah, and, and the thing is, like, everybody benefits from that, really, because it's just everybody's trying to help everybody on YouTube, and that's why there's so much cross-pollination between, like, all the heavy hitters. Like, everybody's in everybody else's videos and doing interviews and stuff like that because everybody kind of wants everybody to succeed, and everybody gives everybody else a bump in some regard. Yeah. It, it's yeah. just like a, the, the politics behind it just blow my mind. Uh, it's it's a it's a crazy it's Chinatown. Somebody no sent somebody sent an on. email uh, to me today. Uh, this is through Frame Rate, uh, the the other show, which this, this is a very mm -hmm. Frame Ratey kind of NSFW. And we should point out that we're about to do our summer movie draft pretty soon. Uh, we'll get details to to you guys here soon. But somebody was saying like, no, seriously, I don't think you guys realize what a threat these other channels are. Like they could steal away all. Twit's views. They could steal away all of Revision 3's views. And I'm just like, I was like, this is, that's the dumbest thing I've Time ever heard. Pack it up, kids. No, it's like, this is, we're shutting it down. This is, no, it's shut it down. Shut, shut it all down. down. Open it up. Or shut shit. them all down. No, but it's, it's just like, look, man, the battle is between new media and old media. It's between right. distributed uh, uh, tastes and, and, uh, middle class rock stars of all different varieties to get exactly what you want, and and the one size fits all BS that we have from television. It's Absolutely, like, it's nothing it's but also, good. It's also between us and everybody else. <laughs> it's not any more of TV versus internet. Now it's everybody versus everybody on the internet. That's the arena, and that's but good. Let's bring it to great. our home it's turf great because the good. Th like things that are good and people do like just naturally get shared and you're like, oh, I like this. And as long as like like a lot of vloggers and people like that are able to make their own stuff, which is like true to their voice. Whereas if they were on TV, they'd have a producer and like a line and like everybody just kind of leaning over them being like, just be just be aware. Like be cool, bro. We've got to get these things, and we've got to get our product placement in, and you're like, I have to work a script around getting Doritos into a shot. Like That, that is the beauty of the internet, is you don't need an overbearing producer who's just going to ruin things. You can just yeah, let the talent just, completely run free and, and get do it. We get our own product. overbearing producers and go, oh, man, i got to get this out today. That is yeah. that is that is true. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, we, we got your plug out. Uh, Justin, you got anything you want to pro before we wrap things up here? Uh, yeah, the Scam School book. What? Released tomorrow, <laughs> folks. If you do not, it's out have now. Your design, so chat room is saying it's out. They're saying it's released. It's dropped. Apparently, right here in the room, these guys are telling me that that it's out. Look, they're there. They're reading it. Do you guys have it right now? Boom. Screw you. Well, guys. then here's the deal. Uh, listen, folks. Get your keisters on over to uh, either iBooks or Amazon, literally anywhere where you can buy eBooks, you are going to find the Scam School book. It is over 200 episodes of Scam School starring Brian Brushwood condensed into an eBook format, the likes of which I'm not even screwing around here. Obviously, uh, you know, we're all friends here and I, I you know, Brian is my, my heterosexual, uh, you know, compatriot in all things in life. However, my this, this book is literally a breakthrough in instructional material Full stop, man. Like it's got video components, the likes of which you've never seen on on uh, an ebook before. It has audio commentary that is on every single trick. And the best thing is, you can buy it on your iPhone, you can buy it on your iPad, you can have it with you if you want to just like let's say you want to do a trick, but you forget, ah, crap, was it this and then this? Because you don't want to screw up the progression of it when you're at the bar. Do yourself a favor, head on over, take a quick walk around the block. Check it out on your phone. Review everything visually, audio style, and then you're going to go back in there, and it's going to rock and roll for you. Here's the deal. Today only, $4.99 is what you can buy it. Uh, it's $4.99? That's we'll a hell of a deal. That's what I was saying. I thought it's a terrible idea. Nobody should get this this cheap. But Justin was like, I'll punch you in the nuts if you charge full price on day one. I'm like, okay. Absolutely. And here's here's why, Okay. He's buying something for his money, like Samuel L. Jackson at the end of Pulp Fiction. Here's what he's buying, Ringo. Number one, son, straight to the top with a bullet. We want to push Brian to the top of every digital list, iBooks, Amazon, wherever we can do it, that's where we want to make it happen. And the only way we can do it is if we get the word out and we make sure that the Scam School ebook is the biggest thing on the internet tomorrow. Let's get it trending. 
bother people on Twitter and, and evangelize. Man, we want to make the Mormons go, all right, guys, calm down with the proselytizing. <laughs> That's our goal tomorrow. Scam school book, baby, in your face. <laughs> Dude, uh, wow, I was fully unprepared. I was ready to swim uphill and try to just squeeze in a 30 second like, hey, buy my book. It's kind of good. I'm real proud of it. It's cheap. Tomorrow's the day. Uh, but uh, thank you very much, Justin. That's very kind of you. In fact, here, let me go ahead and start wrapping things up here. Uh, we'll see you guys. Uh, what do we got going on next week, Justin? I know we have the, the the summer movie draft coming up. I think we have to do it next week. Or we have to knock, or we have no, to no. knock out. It's time let's, sit. We'll, let's do it next week. We'll do it next week. All right. I think we have to do it next week. Summer every, movie every, draft, every, folks. Everybody tell Scott Johnson that he's invited. Because yeah. we're too lazy to pick up the phone and call him, even though we're his number is out the roster. But but uh, everybody, hold on to your butts because my favorite thing on earth, which is the summer movie uh, league, uh, begins in earnest next week. Uh, Sarah Lane will defend her crowd. We actually have to talk to Sarah Lane and Tom and get everything all worked out. But until next week, folks. Uh, uh, Matthew, what, real quick, do you have a Twitter people can follow? Uh, what Twitter? You have a Twitter people can follow. Twitter at Belated Media. Boom. Everything is there. Just belated media. Search it all the way around. All right. There we go. I swear to God, I'm not going to lose this year at the summer uh, movie league. I invented the goddamn game, and I've come in last or second to last every time we've played it. Not this year. Juries coming up. See you guys later. I love you. <laughs> Die to fire, people. Oh, it's not playing our thing. I love you. What? Play. Yeah, play this <laughs> instead. Here. Play this instead. See you next Tuesday. Special report. <laughs> Problem solved. I love you. <laughs> hey, everybody, have you heard the news? <laughs> NSW show. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was saying I should meet myself. <laughs> if you're about to... down on the farm, we've got these great things. <laughs> So, hey everybody, and I'm here to say NSFW in a major way. <laughs> All right, here we go. Howdy, y'all. It's time for NSFW show. Who are we joined by? Well, oh god damn it. Michael, what's your last <laughs> name? Michael Barrett. <laughs> Please promise Barrett. me you'll put that in the episode. Tony, leave this in. Leave this in, Tony. All right, here we go. Uh, here we go.